Eagles, we have, I think, probably the best or one of the best teams in the industry, and and uh, that makes it very important for us. People, uh, people are a key to a lot of things that we do here, to our success, obviously. And uh, guy to my left here, Don Schwartz. I think everybody knows Donnie, and Donnie's been here for 25 years now. Five or six. Yeah. 25 or 26 years. So. Um, I should uh, also mention not in this room today is uh, Bob Goodman. He's out in the barn right now, and he's been here for 27 years. And uh, Brian O'Neill, who's uh, a man of all trades as well, is on a seed delivery truck today, and he's been here for 29 years. And of course, my dad's been here for longer than all of us, the man that started it all. And uh, Manuel, you've been here on and off for two months. <laughs> <laughs> Five years. Five years on. <laughs> I thought it was more. Well, ten years the first time I came. Ten years was my first time. Ten years ago. Only seems like ten minutes. <laughs> as far as far as as far as everybody's roles here, um, again, uh, everybody has their responsibilities, and and uh, Donnie probably would think that uh, he just fixes stuff all day anymore because that's what he does a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, this place has been here since the summer of 1980, and, and uh, we've tried to keep up with things and upgraded uh, certain aspects of the farm, but there seems to be always stuff breaking down. So uh, that uh, that's, uh, takes up a lot of Donnie's time, but of course that's not his main responsibility. Donnie's been uh, really the man in charge here in a lot of ways for so many years. Uh, he was, uh, again, jack of all trades and in charge of what goes on in the barn and in charge of the breeding and in charge of pretty well everything. And uh, his role has changed over the last little while as, as we do, as we do uh, expand what we're, what we're doing and, and um, as we get um, a little bit older as well. Um, Emmanuel's done. Uh, we, we've uh, we've, we've uh, changed a lot of the responsibilities uh, in the barn uh, to uh, Manuel. And uh, on a day-to-day -day basis now, Manuel is uh, very much responsible for, for what goes on in the barn and uh, is doing a fantastic job. Um, certainly is uh, very responsible for working with the show cows every day. Um, we wish we had the time to wash them every day, and, and, uh, but we do work with them a lot and wash them very often and lead them. And, and, uh, and, and you know, as, as everybody knows, uh, there's more than just taking care of the show cows. We do milk 72 cows here and, and uh, do have over 250 head at least on the farm. And, and so uh, there's a lot to do every day. And uh, Bob's in the barn every day um, like a machine. He feeds the cows and feeds the calves and sweeps the floor a lot of times during the day, makes sure everything's nice and clean. And, and uh, Brian's role changes throughout the year. Um, Brian, again, has been here for a very long time, and, and uh, Brian still, uh, every second weekend, is responsible for helping out with chores, and uh, right now we're short one man, so uh, milks every second weekend, and, and uh, helps Donnie with the field work a lot, uh, all the harvesting that needs to be done, and all the planting that's going to be done here in a couple of days, um, and then uh, for... Oh, at least five, six months of the year, Brian works full time in the in the seed business, uh, driving truck, and and uh, plays a key role there as well. So uh, we also have a, a gentleman from Mexico, Fernando, who milks every day and, and does everyday chores. So sounds like we have a lot of people, but there uh, there's a lot to be done, and uh, we do like to do things a little bit differently than than some others. The cows do get brushed every day, the tails are washed every day. Um, so it, it's a lot of extra work and, and we're pretty particular in how we like to keep things here. Uh, I guess the biggest accomplishments, it changes it from year to year. Every year, uh, because of uh, the way Paul and I have run things, we've always got really, really uh, high-end cows that uh, make every day exciting. And I think that's what I look forward to. It just depends on who's due to calve and who, uh, who's on the show string that month. And, that's what really keeps the interest up for me. I guess the most important thing we have done, we've been a master breeder at this farm three times, and uh, 
We've bred a lot of great, excellent cows. Uh, quality BC Francisco, she was twice grand champion at the Royal Winter Fair, which was uh, one of the great highlights of quality farms. And we also uh, have some favorite cows. Francisco was one, uh, Leslie Ultimate, Tammy was another, uh, GHG Citation Wendy, she was the mother of Quality Ultimate that kept this place going when we needed semen royalties. Uh, he gave it to us, Quality Ultimate. And uh, Quality Astri Felice was another cow that was one of our favorites that was all, I forget how you say it, but cow one of our year. favorite cows. Cow of the year. Cow of the year. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it up to the younger crew to go ahead and do whatever they have to. I would say the greatest accomplishments over the years that I've been here is, like Paul say, the first time I came, Grand, uh, Francisco was grand champion on the Royal, and that really got me in the hook and w made me want to come back to this place. And in recent years, you know, working with cows like Raylene or... Laster now, Lulu, I mean, it's like Danny says, every year the goals change and, and the challenge change, but I mean, having great cows around all the time is what keeps things interesting, really. So I'm just going to repeat probably almost what everybody said, but, but certainly for me, uh, when Francisco was grand two years at the Royal, that's probably been one of the biggest highlights in my life, and, and uh, certainly... Uh, through my dad's accomplishments, uh, being part of the Master Breeder Awards three times, but having Francisco Grand twice, and 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 really um, watching how uh, she's developed this herd and how her daughters and granddaughters have developed this herd. Um, she's not only was a great show cow, but she's turned into probably one of the greatest brood cows in the history of the breed. I think uh, for me, um, the Ray Lynn's daughter, Missy, right now um, is developing so quickly. I don't know if she'll get to the Lulu status or, or her mother status, but uh, that's kind of exciting, and that's what I really enjoy watching is these young cows that develop, and, and you know, they have those great udders, and then you just see these frames start to stretch out as they develop, and calve. I can't wait for her to calve again, and actually, I actually can't wait to see her in a couple more months um, when she's uh, really put on her... Uh, her rib and her body that she's uh, looks like she's going to do so. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy you didn't ask just who's my favorite cow because to narrow it down to one cow is almost impossible to be honest. I don't know how people answer that question and only give one name. Um, we all have a lot of favorites. Um, certainly today, uh, Luster has to be pretty well at the top. Uh, today, uh, Ray Lynn. Um, has always been one of my favorites. Uh, Quality Goldwyn Flansko uh, has been up there. Uh, I agree with what Donnie said. Super excited on Quality Atwood Missy Raylin's uh, daughter. And uh, the Damien Lulu cow, how she's developed and how she's changed and how she looked uh, at the spring show here uh, last week is super exciting. And, and the same thing with uh, ID Sid Lucida. Really excited for her future as well. Yeah, as, as we talk about Luster and how she is uh, up there as far as our favorite cows today, I, I, I should mention that uh, we're pretty excited to offer uh, first choice uh, out of Luster at, at the Rocky Mountain sale this July. And um, all the partners at, uh, Ro partners at uh, Rocky Mountain called the other day, and uh, I think they were pretty shocked when uh, we decided to... Uh, to put something in the sale and, and they asked for a choice out of Luster and so that's what we're doing. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody at the Rocky Mountain sale in the beginning of July. Okay, so I'm going to start my favorite cow which holds a really special place in my heart because it was the first cow that I really got to work with. It was Valleyville Raylene. I mean, she was, she was an absolutely spectacular cow and now she seems to be breeding really good on and and Missy and it looks like she'll have a lot of potential like Ari and Danny had said and and excited to see how she develops 
Then another cow is that he mentioned here is quality Goldwyn Flansko, which comes from the heart of the Francisco, the heart of the Francisco family. And she is the second dam of the num number six bull in Italy, which is stock from farm Fontaine, which is a doorman or her snowman daughter in Italy. And, you know, it's very excited seeing all that branch of the family that comes out of Gibson Finsco that is being probably the one of the best blue cows I've seen. Um, you know, to me, uh, making the proper breeding decisions has to be pretty well at the top of the list as far as what's really important to continue on with the future of, of, of our breeding program. Um, everybody knows how challenging it is to to pick the right sires these days and to even decide what is the right bull uh, these days. But, but certainly, um, uh, I did a presentation a couple of years ago and I really stressed, how, again, how important that is to pick the right bull for the right cross. And uh, I'm a firm believer in, in uh, high tight genomic bulls. Um, we, we like to really look at the, their, their actual breakdown, not just their overall one type number, what their actual breakdown is as far as uh, every different aspect of, of a cow. And, and so when we, look at, when we look to breed a cow, we're going to look and see what her faults are and uh, try to pick a bull that's going to improve the best uh, on her faults and uh, try, to, try to stick with... Uh, bulls from great breeding families and sired by, by uh, great bulls as well to try to keep the consistency in our breeding program. So I kind of had a feeling this was going to happen and uh, um, you know it used to be it used to be when you when you're trying to pick bulls it was well there's two or three bulls that you use and carry on and, and uh, dad traveled the, the roads a lot and used to come home and say I saw a lot of great daughters of Bride and Astro Jet or obviously Quality Ultimate or Browndale Commissioner, whatever, whatever bulls they were back then. And, you know, you could uh, see all their daughters and, and, and uh, then choose the bull based on what you saw. Uh, today, uh, with, with genomics, um, um, certainly it makes it a lot more challenging. And I actually had to make a list because the list is so long there was no way that my brain was going to remember every single bull that we use today um, so I wrote it down and I don't need glasses to read this so I'm um, um, not quite yet anyways but but we're we're uh, we've been a big fan of of Atwood here uh, Atwood's done a fantastic job for us uh, we, we already have a third calf Atwood that actually we showed at the spring show uh, last week that was second prize five-year-old uh, quality MD Fofo. So we, we went back and used Atwood a little bit again uh, and certainly using uh, his sons. Um, we've uh, used a fair bit of Brokaw and really, really like our Brokaw daughters. Uh, we bought some Brady semen here, some sex Brady semen the other day. We've used a lot of sex semen over the years. Uh, so those, those would be some of the bulls. Uh, uh, we really like uh, what we're seeing at a Dorman. So we did uh, go back and use Dorman again. Um, we were pretty excited. Uh, we've got uh, two Dormans that will be fresh here in September um, as milk and yearlings. Actually, both of them are out of Valleyville Ray Lynn. So we like our Dorman heifers. So we're using him and uh, some of his sons. Um, there's a Dorman son out of uh, Quality Golden Flansko uh, called uh, Mario. Um, and we used a fair bit of him. Uh, we're using uh, Solomon a little bit as well. Um, I have to look at my list. So then we're also using uh, Beamer uh, lately. We've been using some Beamer, Sid, uh, Defiant, High Octane, uh, Seaver. Uh, so there's a number of bulls. It, it, the, the list is very long, and uh, hopefully we'll be right on most of them. I guess uh, when I was in high school, my brother David worked here. Uh, and coming down, I used to come down on weekends and help uh, him on his weekend to work and, and help uh, the other hired man on his weekend to work. And, and um, I think seeing all those ultimate daughters down the road was really quite an impressive thing. And as a kid, I got to go with Paul to Peterborough and s some stuff like that. And, then, and I think uh, just hanging around and, and, and watching the uh, way Paul did things in those days, it really was exciting. And... and uh, and uh, really sparked uh, an interest, you know. 
So as far as the passion goes, I think everybody in this room had uh, has and had passion probably since we were little kids, really. And uh, I was born with it. It's in my blood. Um, I had one of the best teachers in the world and my father. And, and uh, it's, it's really not something that can be pushed on you. I think you either have that passion or you don't. And uh, certainly... Uh, loving working with cows uh, helps fuel that passion and uh, so I, I've had that since I've been really really young and, and uh, uh, fortunate enough to work with a lot of great cows that my dad had and, and that we have today uh, keeps the fuel in that passion for me. I guess I gotta say what my son just said I think I was born with the passion and just kept on doing it so I guess I repeat like everybody else says, I, I was born and my dad is a dairy farmer back in Spain and, and my dad is grows his herd over the years and it was thanks to one of his partners that I was sent here and when I go here it was the years that Francisco was on, on top and, and it really, really wake up an interest to me. And after I went back home and worked home for a couple of years, I, I just decided to come back. And, and you know, I, I enjoy working with great cows. I enjoy working with great people that he had taught me a lot. And, you know, it's getting more and more fun all the time, I have to say. I don't know what you're talking about. We live in the country here where we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the camera's just faced on here, right? You're not looking outside, but... Oh, it's changed a lot uh, around here in the last number of years, and, and uh, people have asked that question for probably over 10 years, and I think for the longest time, really, uh, you know, it, it really hasn't been that challenging, but uh, as we move forward, uh, oh, and especially over the last couple of years, it does continue to be more challenging. And uh, Donnie will be the it's one. More that, challenging for me, right? Donnie will be the one to to probably answer this because uh, when he's driving up in the road or up and down the roads or across the road with tractors and so on, uh, which we all do, but he does more of it. Um, it does become more challenging <laughs> when you when you have to wait for twenty cars uh, to turn out of your laneway. Um, anyways, it's uh, you know we we started here. Um, we have everything we need here. Uh, you probably could ask my dad this question too, but uh, his mandate is is that uh, we're going to stay here as long as he's around, and so that probably means we're going to be here for a long time. Um, you know, we we do we do have plans to uh, to do uh, hopefully build a heifer barn up at the second farm uh, where we keep all of our heifers now and 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 uh, this summer and uh, hopefully move a bunch of cattle uh, down up there and uh, try to try to save on uh, manure and so on here and and uh, so you know really we have everything we have that we need here and at this point in time we have no plans to to move yeah i think Ari said it all i think uh, being here for so long it's it's kind of caught up to you 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 uh you know if, i think if we moved here last year then we would <laughs> be shell shocked but but it's the type of thing that's come over the time slowly and and the other thing is that shows you how much passion we have for our cows. We love to be in this location because uh, we, we have the greatest location as far as people heading back from a show to the airport from a sale. or We get a lot of drop-in uh, people that uh, we love to talk about our cows and we like to show our cows and talk to uh, a lot of foreign visitors. So it's an ideal location for that and I guess that was Paul's plan all along um, to be in this area. So. But it is a challenge some days. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding back. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think we have, we have a lot of goals here. And uh, right now, thanks to DFO, to be perfectly honest, uh, one of our main goals is to ship as much milk as possible. <laughs> um, we, uh, we just uh, bought uh, Elgin Craig's tank. Um, so we're we're trying we, we're not going to fill it because we don't have enough quota to fill it, but we're certainly trying to ship as much milk as we can, and that's just uh, obviously a minor goal, but when still an important goal. But uh, you know, having that feeling of uh, having Grand Champion at the Royal Winter Fair, um, 
is a feeling like no other for me. And uh, I would love to have that again. Um, I would certainly love to have that with a homebred cow, um, but I'll take it anyway. Um, I, I hate to say this because last year I had this plan and, and uh, we had a number of things that went wrong and, and that's just the way life goes sometimes. But it's been a long time since we've shown at World Dairy Expo. Uh, I've got the rooms booked. Um, we've got the cows here. Uh, as long as everything goes smooth from now till October, uh, that's definitely part of the plan is to, to go back to World Dairy Expo and to show there and uh, continue obviously to show uh, at the Royal Winter Fair every year. And, and but, but certainly for me, it's uh, to try to have a grand champion again at uh, either one of those shows and uh, try to continue to breed uh, great cows like my father has in the past. And uh, it's really, really important to me to have uh, as many quality bred cows in our show string. We love to buy great cows or uh, develop great cows, but uh, to have them home bred is uh, very special to me. Yeah, I would, I would just say ditto. <laughs> um, when you, when you, when you look through the heifer barns and the and the calf barns, and you see the potential, and you know the generations and generations that, that we've been breeding and uh, you, you really get excited and, and but it's a caution excitement after last year you know you don't want to jump the gun and pull get the cart ahead of the horse but we've got a few heifers that uh, we we brought down a month ago and you know we all we're all just smiling about <laughs> it so if things keep going well and we keep working as hard as we do, I think uh, good luck will come too. So um, I'm looking forward to the future. We really do think the best is yet to come. Okay, I will say this, repeat again what Danny and Ari said. I mean, I will say the, you know, like the year I was here, I came as a trainee and Francisco was grand champion and, you know, now I'm a lot more involved into the show cows and the show string and you know to have a grand champion at either the royal or madison i mean it mean a lot and you know like they say you know see all these heifers you know about to calf and looking good i mean it makes things very very exciting and and i'm looking forward to for everything to go okay and make the trip to madison this year oh i had dreams yeah i I had good thoughts. Of course, I'm proud of what they're doing. All I do is a little bit of the book work. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he still pays the bills for anybody that's wondering. Yeah. <laughs> we, we always say, my dad, uh, anytime we have visitors here and we, we show old Carlton Pam outside and Pam, Pam's, uh, pa Pam's almost 17 now and every time I, I show uh, everybody Pam, I say, Pam's like my dad. He might be one of the elderly ones here, but he's still the boss. <laughs>